Hi, my name is Peter Clifton. I live on the south coast of Portsmouth and I've been a Christian for many, many years. And one of the things, one of the questions that's most asked, especially by young people, is can you lose your salvation? And that's a topic that I'd like to deal with and look at today if I can. I want to begin by stating the obvious that nobody has ever managed to earn his salvation by good works. And you don't lose your salvation by bad works. I'm convinced that works, good, bad or indifferent, are a complete red herring. So I want to talk about the, the security and the sovereignty of salvation. Because it is both secure and it is actually sovereign. And the very notion that we could somehow lose our salvation at the drop of a hat implies that God does not see the end from the beginning, or else that he's a very cruel taskmaster. In the first place, we're given salvation simply because we cannot earn it. The whole point of Calvary was that we could not earn it. And so for God to give us salvation and to grant us all the joy and all the peace that that entails, knowing that at some point down the road he's going to take it from us, is not, that's not the God I know, I have to say. Now, John talks in John 3.16, Jesus says, we will have eternal life. Eternal life. And that is not a long time. It is time without end. And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth and the life in John 14. So he gives us his life. And Jesus' life is not uh, limited. It goes on and on and on. And that is the kind of life that he aspires for us and has given to us as Christians. And I've never read anywhere in soteriology the notion that a man can or has to maintain his own salvation. Oh, this is not a license to sin. You don't sin against the one you love. And the longer we become, but the longer we are Christians, the more and more sin falls away. But we'll always be sinning. And the problem with this notion that you can lose your salvation because of sin begs the question, at what point is enough sin too much sin for salvation? And when you look at it like that, you realise straight away that that is a nonsense. It makes no sense at all. I want to talk about the immutability of fatherhood or parenthood. I am a parent myself and irrespective of how my daughter feels about me, if she were to reject me, if she were, if I were to let her down, it, it, whether it's through uh, rejection, whether it be through disappointment, it wouldn't, it makes no difference. We cannot undo the fact that we are parents. And we cannot undo the fact that we are somebody's children. Irrespective, we can reject them, we can do all manner of things. But we are still their children. They are still our children. We are still their parents. And with God, there's a kind of divine genetics at work here. It cannot be undone. And God is not in the game of rejecting his children. He's simply not in that game at all. So I want to ask, I want to ask a question. If you believe that you can lose your salvation because of works, I want to ask you this. Is the express will of God weaker or stronger than the express will of Satan or man. In other words, when God says, let there be light, do you think the enemy could have stopped him? 
do you think the devil could have sort of interrupted him and said, no, I'm sorry, that's not good enough, I don't want that. No, no, no. And God is not in the game of making his people insecure. And I want to just add this quickly, which is this, that if you believe that your salvation rests in your hands, it leads to one of two things. One, fear. The fear that at any moment I will be unsaved. Two, pride. I have my salvation because I'm good enough. And both, quite frankly, are just despicable heresies that we have no, no time for or no business with. So if you're concerned about the security and the sovereignty of your salvation, I want you to know that it's wrapped up in heaven where moths and thieves do not break in and the elements do not rust and destroy. God knew from the very beginning what he was getting when he got you. He saw right from the word go, every breath you would take, before a word was on your tongue, he knew it completely, says the psalmist. And he chose you anyway. He didn't choose you, didn't choose you because you were good enough. He chose you because he loved you. And he continues to love you. And I want you to know today that you will not lose your salvation.